On the 26th December 2004, Sri Lanka has to face the most disastrous natural disaster. It was the tsunami disaster. In this disaster, 250,000 people died in countries bordering the Indian Ocean. In Sri Lanka, about 40,000 people died. So how was the tsunami formed? On the 26th December 2004 at 6.58 a.m. in Sri Lankan time, an earthquake of Richter scale value 9.1 occurred in the seabed near Sumatra Islands of Indonesia. The process taking place at a convergent border occurred there. So what happens at a convergent border? The two borders, the two tectonic plates collide and one plate moves underneath the other. Therefore, the Indian tectonic plate moved underneath the Burmese tectonic plate. Owing to the upward movement of the Burmese tectonic plate and the vast amount of energy released by the earthquake, the oceanic water raised up. The tsunami wave created spread throughout the Indian Ocean at a speed greater than 800 kilometers per hour. Incidents causing tsunami. Earthquakes occurring in the oceanic bed, volcanic eruptions in the ocean flow, earth slips in the ocean flow, falling of a large meteorite to sea. Of the above, the greatest ruin would be caused by the fall of a gigantic meteorite to the sea. Such a devastation may also be caused by the collision of an asteroid within the earth. Table 18.5 shows information regarding tsunami occurred during the past 20 years. Assignment 3. Find the margins of crustal plates or tectonic plates where the following countries are located and prepare a table. Refer figure 8.19 in page number 135. An example is done for you. Nature of a tsunami wave. The tsunami wave is type of a water wave. If you drop a pebble in a still water surface, you would observe ripples forming on the water surface. And this is a water wave. Now, let us try to understand the characteristics of a normal water wave. This is depicted in figure 18.23. As you can see, this wave comprises of an alternate series of crests and troughs. So what are these crests and troughs? The maximum distance in which the water particles of the water wave travels in the upward direction is known as a crest, while the maximum distance a water particle taking part in the water wave travels in the downward direction is known as a trough. The distance between two successive crests or troughs is called the wavelength. That means the distance from one crust to the closest next crust and the distance from one trough to the closest next trough is known as the wavelength. The depth from the midpoint of a wave to its crest or the depth of the depth from the midpoint of a wave to its trough is known as the amplitude and that is the maximum distance traveled by a particle of the wave in the upward direction or the downward direction. The effect of the move which occurs in sea surface depends on the depth of the water column. So the movement of the water wave depends on the depth of the water column. Now if you look at figure 18.24, the wavelength and the speed of the tsunami waves changes according to the depth of the water column. Now this is a region where the depth of the water is high 
and this is a region where the depth of the water is low. So this region, region 1, is known as the deep sea region and this region, region number 2, is known as the shallow sea region. In the deep sea, the speed of tsunami waves is high. Therefore, the wavelength is also high. As you can see, the distance between one crest one crest to another crest is long therefore the wavelength is high but the amplitude or the height of the wave is low therefore tsunami waves cannot be identified in deep sea further the ships streaming in deep sea are not damaged by the tsunami waves in the shallow sea the speed of tsunami waves decrease. Their wavelength also decrease. As you can see, the distance between one crest to another crest is less. Therefore, the wavelength decreases. But the amplitude or the height of the wave increases. Therefore, the boats near the coast are damaged by the tsunami waves. In tsunami waves, the trough first approaches the shore. Then the sea is drawn backwards. And this happened when tsunami occurred in Sri Lanka. This is a forwarding of an imminent tsunami. Coral reefs and mangroves retard the speed of tsunami waves. Therefore, the coral reefs and mangroves should be protected live without causing damage to them. Since there's a possibility of tsunami following an earthquake, people should be vigilant about them. Investigations must be made about the sites which have been already damaged by tsunami and the people living in such areas should be made aware about them. Wildfires. When a forest is dry, Wildfires may erupt due to natural reasons such as lightning or setting fire deliberately or by mistake. And one of the recent, most recent wildfires was observed in Australia. Bushfires occurred in Australia. The bushfires is also a type of a wildfire. It is an uncontrollable fire in a wooded or grassy area. And this occurred in February. And because of these bushfires in Australia, 46 million acres of land were burnt and 34 people died. The biggest destruction to biodiversity was observed when the Amazon wildfires took place in November 2019. Significant portions of the forest in Brazil and Bolivia were burnt. There are three factors that should be met for a, for a fire to break out. Availability of a combustible substance. Combustion means burning. So there are certain substances that are easily burnt. So the availability of a combustible substance is a factor that should be met in order for a fire to break out. Availability of a support of combustion or oxygen. Oxygen is necessary for combustion. Without oxygen, combustion would not take place. Heating the combustible substance to the ignition temperature. When we heat a substance, its temperature will increase. And at one point, the substance will start burning. The temperature at that particular point is known as the ignition temperature. So different substances have different ignition temperatures. So in order for a substance to burn, it has to be heated up to its ignition temperature. Several factors are affecting the spread of wildfires. Existence of dry plant leaves or tree stems as the combustible materials. Dry plant leaves and tree stems will easily burn. Therefore, existence of these materials will make the wildfires to spread faster. Prevalence of a high temperature. For as long as the temperature of the atmosphere remains high, the wildfires will keep on spreading. 
low humidity in air or less amount of water vapor content. Profound supply of oxygen to the fire due to blowing of wind. When there's a high windy condition in the atmosphere, it will supply plenty of oxygen to the areas of uh, wildfire. Therefore, it will spread faster. Slopey land that helps upward spread of the fire. The ferociousness of a wildfire. In a wildfire, a very tall column of fire moves forward very fast. The smoke produced in this rises to a height of thousands of meters in the atmosphere. More and more fires also would break out because fire flames are carried through air to distant places from the fire. Plants and animals have been damaged due to wildfires. Organisms are adversely affected even by the smoke produced by wildfires and this smoke will cover the atmosphere for many days. It has been reported that respiratory difficulties and even deaths have occurred in certain instances. In Sri Lanka, approximately 4,000 acres of land has been destroyed in 2016 owing to wildfires. The relationship between increase in global warming and natural disasters. Now here is a chart that indicates the increase of average temperature of the world from 1860 to 2020. This condition is known as global warming. Scientists indicate that the main reason for this increase in temperature is the greenhouse effect. So what is this greenhouse effect? During daytime, the earth gets heated up by sun rays. During night, heat is lost to space. So the earth gets cooled. The earth atmosphere, atmosphere of the earth consists of carbon dioxide gas and water vapor. So carbon dioxide gas and water vapor in the atmosphere absorb and retain a part of the heat released from the earth. They help to keep the earth warm. This is called the greenhouse effect. This effect creates favorable environment for the living beings on the earth. But due to the increase of release of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, the greenhouse effect has increased and thereby causing global warming. What are greenhouse gases? Gases that trap heat in the atmosphere are called greenhouse gases. Heat energy is received by the earth from the solar radiation of the sun. And this heat energy is trapped by greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. Carbon dioxide, methane, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, ozone, and chlorofluorocarbon are greenhouse gases. Because of the increase in the concentration of greenhouse gases, the temperature of the earth is gradually increased. The ways by which greenhouse gases are added to the environment. Release of carbon dioxide by volcanic eruptions, thermal power plants, and combustion of fuels in vehicles. Com the combustion of fuels in vehicles is the major cause of releasing carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Release of methane from heap of garbage, marshes, etc. You have already learned methane is biogas and it is released by marshlands. Release of chlorofluorocarbons from refrigerators and air conditioners. CFC is a gas which is used as a coolant in refrigerators and air conditioners and during repairs of refrigerators and air conditioners, CFC can leak into the atmosphere. Global warming and cyclones. The graph in figure 12.28 indicates the change in the number of the incidence of cyclones in the world from 1950 to 2015. You, can, you will observe in the graph that the number of events of cyclones in the world has gradually increased during this period. Global warming and natural disasters. Figure 18.29 
is a histogram which depicts how the number of natural disasters changed due to the, during the period 1980 to 2010. This chart indicates that the number of natural disasters has gradually increased during this period. From the above information, it is clear that there is a relationship between the increasing global warming and the increasing number of natural disasters. And as you already know, we are just halfway through year 2020, but there has been many natural disasters around us. For an example, the cyclone Amphan, which originated from the Bay of Bengal, took place in May 2020. It affected India and Bangladesh heavily, and before it made landfall in India, it affected Sri Lanka also. And the worst cyclone to hit India happened in May 2019, and it was Cyclone Fanny. What can we do to prevent the increase in global warming? Forestation and conservation of forests, usage of public transport instead of private transport, consumption of more plant food and obtaining them from areas close to the residents, Economizing electricity using energy saving electrical appliances. For an example, you can use CFL bulbs instead of incandescent light bulbs because CFL bulbs require less energy or they consume less energy. Reducing the amount of materials consumed daily, not only reducing, you can reuse and recycle the amount of materials uh, used. Living a simple lifestyle without using more materials. Raising awareness of others about the facts of global warming. 